Henning, you are right now joining us from the Livestock Futures Conference in Bonn, where you are a key speaker. You are part of a panel looking into the compatibility of international trade and sustainable livestock systems. What is the most pressing issue in this regard? Well, what has been discussed here is the role of international trade with regard to environmental and sustainability factors in the livestock sector. And of course, there are many things to be said in favor of international trade because uh, it's, it's based on comparative advantage and it has the potential of lowering um, resource issues and and um, environmental impact. But at the same time, it is also true that uh, countries apply very different standards when it comes to environmental regulations and that creates uh, disadvantages and advantages across the world. And uh, there is a need to uh, look at this more carefully and there is a need for countries to be exactly aware of what they are trading because they're not only trading products, they're also trading environmental impact. And that's something that should be better understood. Another issue, and you asked me about what is a pressing issue, what, which has been discussed here at the panel, is the issue of, uh, of um, inferior parts, if you want, of, say, uh, chicken, chicken wings and, and the likes feed that go to African markets and that have the potential of, uh, of outcompeting local production. So there is the issue here that cheap imports from mainly developed countries, but also some developing countries, gets into poor countries where it has the potential of, of, of driving local producers out of the market. A specific objective of the conference is to provide input into the um, to the global agenda for action for a sustainable livestock sector, of which you are the coordinator. The global agenda was formed against the backdrop of growing global demand for livestock products. Yeah, the issue is, is not only that uh, the the gro growing global demand for livestock products, but it is the fact that that the livestock sector is very resource hungry. It uses a lot of land, it uses a lot of water. It is very prominent in greenhouse gas emissions. It's also a major factor affecting um, biodiversity. And when we see the projections of how much meat and egg and milk production and consumption uh, are predicted to expand over the next decades, there is the worrying question of how this can be accommodated against the finite resource base. And we must look at that very much at the center of the agenda to, um, to make this, um, to reduce the hoofprint or the footprint of animal production and making it more efficient and more environmentally benign. What is the potential of the livestock sector in addressing food insecurity, especially in the light of the uh, diminishing natural resource base in general? Well, in many countries, uh, the livestock sector still has an overwhelmingly positive impact on food security. It adds to, um, to it makes a net contribution to overall food supply. It brings into the food supply resources that can't be used otherwise. If you think of marginal grazing, if you think of crop residues. So all these feed items are, would be useless if they weren't used by the, by the livestock sector. And the livestock sector turns that resource base into something very useful and, and, and cherished by the local populations. Uh, but in some places, and as you go on in, in the development trajectory, um, it becomes negative, uh, where actually livestock become a detractor to overall food supply and it's driving up cereal prices, for example, because uh, feed demand is, is, is very strong. It constitutes about one third of the cereal harvest that goes into the livestock sector. So there's a, there's a possibility of the livestock sector also detracting from food security. So it's got both roles and we should try to enhance and focus on the positive role. The Global Agenda of Action is a multi-stakeholder initiative for the livestock sector, whereas the Global Donor Platform connects donor institutions in the area of agriculture and rural development. Are there any specific issues that can only be solved in a collaborative environment? The need for collaboration and for multi-stakeholder consultation and collaboration is at the heart of the agenda. We've come to realize um, in FAO, for example, that intergovernmental action only talk, takes us that far. 
other players have also realized that they themselves are important in a number of ways, that the private sector uh, needs institutional support, that policies need the engagement and the involvement of local stakeholders, and that at the international front, we're not likely to make progress if we focus only on public to public um, or public sector intervention. So we need a broader spectrum of stakeholders to tackle the issue because there are activities that are really run across the spectrum of stakeholders. If you talk about research, if you try to take about, talk about knowledge transfer, if you talk about incentive schemes, they all require multi-stakeholder engagement, and that's what we are trying to achieve with the, with the agenda of action. At the heart of it is that we're trying to create a, a message, a, a concept that is acceptable to rather diverse stakeholders that until recently have not collaborated on this issue, but they have now agreed that they want to engage, and there is a common ground, and there is a big tent, a tent big enough for all these stakeholders so that we can pull together uh, resources and talents to address what is actually a big development question. And do you see a, um, a potential for a combination between the global uh, donor platform and the global agenda? I think the global donor platform is, is another attempt to, um, to create consultation and get more punch for your investment by trying to pull resources, by trying to align different strategies of donors, and I think it would be very useful uh, for the agenda to talk to the global donor platform to see how resources can be mobilized uh, from the global donor platform, but also from other stakeholders. And I'm, here I'm talking about foundations, here I'm talking about the private sector, and here I'm also talking about donor, um, developing country governments. Thank you very much, Henning. Thank you, Pascal.